Okay, here we are, part two of this shed build in our backyard. And the end result of today's work is this pad. 12 by 10 area of crushed stone, compacted, and a wood form also leveled off and squared away, ready to receive concrete in the next step. Let's see how we got there. Okay, so the day started with a trip to Home Depot to rent both this trailer and that compactor. And then a trip to the stone supplier, picked up this uh, three quarter minus crushed aggregate. And as you can see, it was very sunny on this morning. The temperature was actually in the mid 30s and throughout the day it was in the 40s and some cloud and some sun. So another great day in North Texas to be doing this work. So in between part one and part two, I did do some further digging. Um, just blowing some debris there and here I'm laying down the forms this is a 10 by 12 area I'm using four 12 foot boards I'm gonna leave the excess on those two boards hanging over after the concrete is cured and I remove these boards I do want to use those for a different purpose and here just screwing the form together and then after this, I'll just start working through the level of the 2x4 form for the amount of rock that's coming in. Because of the slope of the ground, the near side will have about 3 inches of rock, where the back side will have closer to 6 or 7 inches of rock. And here, I changed my mind about the sprinkler head I moved in part 1. It wasn't where the new head was, but where the connection was. It was going to be under the slab, so I changed my mind. So I just dug along that pipe um, back beyond where the slab would be, um, cut the pipe, drain the water, no mud. There's a tree root here so I couldn't dig through that, just pulled that pipe out and then just putting a cap on here with some cement. I will reroute this sprinkler to its new location later. And just do a little backfill here. And then my neighbor Howie stopped by. Our neighbors Howard and Kathy are the best neighbors. Howie and I are discussing the project here and he's actually offering to help. And so while I'm gonna finish leveling the form, Howard is off getting the first load of rock. So just leveling everything out here. And then there's Howie with the first load of rock. Wasn't quite ready, so he's in a holding pattern. Uh, getting those stakes set first in the back corner and then we'll start squaring things up We had a little work to do to get things square, but once we got there we got the stakes in this front corner as well and As we were putting the stakes in one thing we were careful of was to make sure that the top of those stakes were below the top of the 2x4 so that later when we screed that concrete the screed, the 2x4 screed, can float across these other 2x4s without obstruction. And then just working some string around on some corner pins. And the goal here was to make sure that the 2x4s were being pinned in, staked in, and they were straight. And they would stay straight later when the concrete was poured. And then here we're just removing that back support so that the concrete could easily or the rock could easily be rolled into that area so just filling the gorilla cart with rock here and it was at this time I realized I should have prepared to hire some <laughs> some labor um, got pretty tired here um, and actually a neighbor another neighbor um, his son came over my camera stopped filming so I didn't get him on here at all and so he hauled in the rest of the stone while I raked and leveled. And here I'm screeding the rock to make sure it's level in both directions. And then just using the compactor here, this was a great investment of rental dollars. Uh, this is a not a very big pad. I've never done concrete work like this before. Uh, so doing this manually compacting this rock manually would have just taken so much more time so uh, to me it was worth just the rental fee to get this done quickly uh, it is a challenge a bit to uh, control and so that the sharp corners create ridges in the rock so I was trying to take a Zamboni approach and take wide turns and still uh, get some of the middle and the compacted rock is very solid 
it's not quite concrete, but when you're walking on it, you can tell the difference between a compacted stone and uncompacted stone. And then just finishing the compacting in the corners here manually with a 4x4 post and a 2x12 just to finish up the corners. That compactor worked really well in the main area. Um, and then just doing it manually here. So this was a good finish of the day. All in all, I felt like it was a would have liked to have gotten more done, uh, but this was a good day too. And here's the finished product from part two of this shed build. This is actually filmed the next day, so there's already some leaves blown on here. But just showing this form from a different angle. The compacted stone, the level and square form. Overall, pretty happy with this project so far. Thank you for watching.